Okay, this is exercise 20b. Um, so this is problem solving using sinusoidal functions. Um, all right, so uh, many different situations in the, the world in general can be represented with sinusoidal functions. Uh, a couple of them we presented today, uh, and we'll talk about a few more in class. All right, so the average daily maximum temperature in Winnipeg follows a sinusoidal pattern. If you think about it, every June, or July, let's call it, uh, every July, we have the highest average temperature on a certain day. And then every January, we have the lowest possible temperature. And that temperature goes from January, it warms up, all the way to July. And then on the, in July, it cools down. So um, the lowest value, so this is the average high, is negative 14 in January 15th. That is the coldest day of the year, typically. And the highest temperature in in July, so January 15th, and the, uh, the highest temperature is 26 degrees on average on July 15th. So this is the average high. We could do a different one for the average low. Okay, so keys to this question. January 15th, well that is obviously the 15th day of the year. July 15th, okay, with some calculations, you'll get this is the 196th day of the year. And there are obviously 365 days in one year. So find, write a sinusoidal equation to represent this scenario using the cosine function. Okay, so use the cosine function because we can start with the maximum, and we know the maximum is in July. So that's an easy one. All right, values we need. Okay, well, since there is uh, the minimum, okay, so the minimum uh, would be negative 14, right, if you were to sketch a graph, and then your maximum would be 20. Okay, so um, you know that the difference, the total difference between those two, okay, so the difference between 26 and negative 14, there would be 40 degrees Celsius, right, between those two, okay, which means here the amplitude would be 20. So our A value would be 20. Okay, so again, that's the difference between the min and the max, and then the amplitude is half of that. All right, so now for the D, the D value, so basically the average temperature throughout the whole year, our central axis, would be the midpoint between 26 and negative 14. So again, if you want to calculate that, you could simply go 26 plus negative 14 divided by 2. So this would be 12 divided by 2, which gives us our D value is equal to 6. It's kind of depressing, considering that uh, this would be considered the average temperature in Winnipeg throughout the year. Average high temperature. Okay, so our A value is here, our D value is here. Okay, so those were somewhat easy to calculate. Um, now our B, well our B is pretty easy to figure out because we know the period. We know that the period is equal to 365 days a year. It takes 365 days a year to come back to the original day. So therefore, our B value, okay, B is going to equal to 2 pi divided by the period, which is, oops, this would be 2 pi over 365. I can't simplify that, so we'll leave it as is. All right, and now the C value. So we know, don't, anytime we're looking for the cosine function, we're looking to find the maximum. And we know the maximum is on the 196th day. Therefore, C will be equal to 196. So it takes 196 days to get to your maximum. So that's the translation, basically to the right. Uh, so therefore, if you bring all that together, we could have Y equals to A cos of... 2 pi over 365 uh, x, or sorry, in this we'll say t time and days, uh, we could put it x, uh, minus 196 uh, and then plus 6. And so this would be the equation of all our high, um, our daily high temperatures throughout the year in Winnipeg. All right, so now find the average temperature on October 27th. So typically, this lesson would be taught at the end of October, um, which we're at the beginning of November. We're pretty close. 
So therefore, I'm just trying to find what the average high temperature was on October 27th. And October 27th so happens to fall and to be the 300th day of the year. So all I'm doing is I'm replacing my x value, right, with 300, and I'm solving for y. So you're going to have y equals to 200. So that y is your temperature, right? x is the day of the year. Um, maybe I should write that somewhere. So we're going to say y. So this is the average temperature. And then x. This is going to be day of year. Okay, so go back to this. So I know I'm looking for my y, and I know my x because I know the day of the year I want to find the average temperature for. So 2 pi over 365, 300 minus 196 plus 6. So we've got a couple of calculations to do. Um, for the record, here you could just plug all this into your calculator directly, but I'm going to do a little bit of simplification before that. So you have 2 pi over 365 times, this is going to be 104, because it's the difference between 300 and 196, and then plus 6. And I invite you to take out your calculator, and make sure that your calculator is in radians, because we are working with radians, so notice that value of b. And you plug all that in, you get, I'm going to round three decimal places as usual, 1.645. So this would be degrees Celsius. So that means on October 27th, the average high temperature is anywhere between 1 and 2 degrees. Okay, on the next page, we're asking you to use the exact same function, except we're finding the, which day of the year will have an average high temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. So um, here I'm giving you y is equal to 10 degrees, and I need you to find x. So we have 10 equals to 20 cos 2 pi over 365 um, x minus 196 um, plus 6. So all I'm doing here is I'm solving for x. And this will be a little harder. We kind of did this on um, exercise 20a. We did something very similar to this, except this time won't give us exact values. So it'll cost us to do a little bit more work. So first thing we do is bring the 16 over, and then I'm going to divide each side by by 20. So I should get uh, so minus so we have four, and we divide by 20 equals to cos of all this stuff. Okay, so again, all I did was bring the six over minus six, and then divide by 20. So this is one fifth. Okay, so. I need to get rid of this cos. Again, the, the variable I'm starting to solve is x. So I need cos of negative 1 So to get rid of that cos. So what I get is cos negative 1. And again, I'm going to simplify that to 1 fifth. Sorry, that didn't come out very clean. So 1 fifth equals 2. Uh, 2 pi over 365 x minus 196. Okay, so here's a little bit of a problem. Um, we need to solve for that. Well, if you guys remember, if you were to do this in an equation, this would give you two values. Cos is positive, so you would get a, a value in the first and the fourth quadrant. So this goes back to exercise 11 and 12. So what you're going to do is you're going to plug it in your calculator, and you're going to get an angle of reference of 1.3694. Okay, so uh, just to on the side here, just to kind of do a little bit of work, our angle of reference will be 1.3694. So the two solutions would be, obviously in the first quadrant, it's just the angle of reference, so 1.3694. And then in the fourth quadrant, you would have 2 pi minus your angle of reference, which gives us 4 point nine sorry nine one three seven okay so those are the two solutions for this equation so on this side here I'm gonna replace this with one of the two values and I'm gonna replace this with the other value so what we're gonna get I'm gonna 
move it over here. Maybe I'll change colors just to make sure we can identify it. Okay, so we're going to have two equations here. Maybe I can need to see the, the answers. So we're going to have uh, 1.3. Hmm, got a hard time here. 1.3. Three six nine four equals to two pi over three sixty five times x minus one ninety six, and I'm going to have the exact same thing here, except four point nine one three seven nine one three seven equals to two pi over three sixty five x minus one ninety six. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do, and I'll do most of the work here, and this one I'll just probably come up with an answer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 365 on each side. So I'm solving for x, right? So multiply 365 on each side, and then you get a number, and then you'll divide each side by 2 pi to get rid of the 2 pi. So you're going to get divide this new number by 2 pi, and then you're going to add 196. So again, um, same thing over here. Multiply by 365 each side, divide by 2 pi to get rid of that, and then add 196. So for the top one, we would get uh, 275, whoops, 275.55.55 equals to x. And for the bottom one, for the bottom one, according to our calculation, we get 481.44. I only went to two decimal places here because we're talking about a day. Right? We're talking about a specific day, so really only the whole number would be really interesting. Um, so we're going to call this the 275th day, so it'll be during the 275th day, and this will be the 481th day. Notice that the 481th day falls outside of one year. It just means because we shifted right, our graph 196 to the right, our first year only starts at 196. And if you think about it, in July... Um, you're going to have your highest temperature, and then in October, uh, you'll probably, or October, or maybe October or September, you'll hit an average high of 10 degrees, and then you'll hit that next high again when you're coming back in the spring, so maybe somewhere around March. Okay, so the day of the year would be 275, and we could calculate that, or the 481th day, which again, we could just calculate that. Um, to get which day of the year this would be, you could just subtract 365, and that's the day of the year you would have. All right, for the next example, at a seaport, the depth of water, h meters, at time t hours, during a certain day is given by this formula. Okay, so here I give you the formula. Whoops. Here I give you the formula, and uh, I want to find a few pieces of information. So the first thing I want to do is find the period. Okay, well, another way to write this equation, and maybe a little bit more common to the way we've been writing it is like this. You would have 1.8 sine, and usually the coefficient here, this 2 pi over 12.4, we combine that. So I'm actually going to simplify that. The 2 divided by 12.4, that would be 1 by 6.2. So you could rewrite this as saying pi over 6.2 times t minus 400. That should be minus and then you'd have plus 3.1 obviously here as well. Okay, so this is our B value. So this is just a simplified version of this value. So if our B is equal to pi over 6.1, or sorry, 6.2, our period is gonna be equal to two pi divided by that value. So divided by pi over 6.12, and again, if you guys want to rewrite it like this, it might be a little bit more obvious. So it's 6.2 divided by pi. The pi's cancel out. And your period is simply 12.4. So notice that represents um, about 12.4 hours, which means there is a high tide and a low tide all within that 12.4 hour period, okay? So that's what a period represents, that's a T's in hours. So we're talking about 12.4, 12 which means you'll get low tide and high tide all within about half a day. The amplitude, 
That one's easy to find. That's just the value of a, which is exactly a, whoops, a equals to 1.8. Okay, and the phase shift, again, not too much hard difficulty to find. The phase shift, we've moved over four to the right, right, on a sine graph, which means the phase shift is just four to the right. So C is equal to, or in this case T, but C is equal to four. Okay, so again, that comes from the zero from here, here. So I don't have the decimal here. At least it doesn't look like it. There we go, put the decimal there. Okay, and B, what is the maximum depth of the water? Well, apparently that's not moving with me anymore. Um, the maximum depth of the water, and when does it occur? Well, the maximum depth, okay, if you look at it, the normal depth would be 3.1, that's our central line, and you're going to go above 1.8, and you're going to go below 1.8. So the maximum would be just equals to D plus the value of A. And we'll take the absolute value, because if it was negative, um, you would go the opposite. So here, you go 3.1 plus 1.8, which means our maximum depth will be 4.9 meters. Okay, and then the last part here, it's asked you what is the depth of the water at 5 a.m.? So our, uh, our equation was uh, H, oops, want a pencil, uh, H is equal to 1.8 sine, uh, this is 2 pi, this is T minus 4, I'm not gonna write the 0.00, uh, divided by 12.4 and then uh, plus 3.1. So the information I'm giving you is the time at 4 a.m. So at 4 a.m. Uh, sorry, 5 a.m. So I'm going to replace t with 5. So if I replace t with 5, I have 1.8 sine of 2 pi over 12.4. Uh, this notice that if I replace t with 5, this is 5 minus 1, or sorry, my, 5 minus 4, which gives you 1 plus 3.1. Again, you would have your calculator for this. I encourage you to take out your calculator, make sure you can calculate it. Uh, again, everything here is calculated in radians, so you sh your calculator should be in radians. And plug that into your calculator, you get three, whoops, need a pencil, 3.9735, and that's meters. So that means the height of the water at 5 a.m. would be 3.9735 meters. Okay, good luck with the lesson, guys, and I'll see you in class. And don't forget, this is the end of a test unit, so there will be a test assigned at the end of for exercises 13 to 20.